how deep is the 2025 dynasty rookie class we're talking about that in today's video actually this is part two if you haven't checked out part one check it out put it out about a week maybe two weeks ago going over you know the the college players of the 2024 college season and guys that should be entering or could be entering the nfl draft in 2025 which means fantasy relevant players for our 2025 dynasty rookie drafts it's never too early to start preparing actually the people who start preparing now are always the people that have the best success because you go with the ebbs and flows you don't overreact to news that happens in march right you know throughout the entire season that this player was considered better than this player and now we're overrating this other player so never too early to check that out again check out part one part one has most of the players that are going to be going at each position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, most of the players that are going to be in that first to second round of the NFL draft, first to early second round of your dynasty rookie draft. So now we're going to get a little bit deeper. And, you know, someone left a comment on one of my videos basically saying um, it's good to, to see how deep the class is going to be because we kind of know the first round in almost any uh, dynasty rookie draft, it's going to be good. You know, some are going to be better than others. Yes, but the first round is almost always going to be good. It's how good is the second and the early third round, right? Just think about if you knew how deep this 2024, this last dynasty rookie class was, and you were just stockpiling second and third round picks because you knew there was just incredible amount of talent, you'd be sitting pretty right now. So this is the preparation, early preparation, way too early because a lot's going to change. Preparation for our 2025 dynasty rookie drafts. Again, check out the other video if you haven't. But we're starting off with the quarterback position. The five quarterbacks we went over in the um, in the first video were um, uh, Carson Beck, Shador Sanders, Quinn Ewers, Jalen Milrow, Milro, and Cameron Ward. The first three, Beck, Sanders, and Ewers, are considered first-round picks right now. Um, Cameron Ward and Milrow are kind of considered second-round picks, potential first-round picks, depending on how they play this year. Today, the first guy we're going over is Drew lr out of penn state and actually as you can see from my little graphic down there he's actually the qb5 now he actually since i made the last video he swapped places with cameron ward who's now the qb6 so drew lr for whatever reason has been moving up the mock and this is according to mock draft database the consensus um spots their consensus adp they compile um i believe they compile like hundreds of first round mock drafts, second round mock drafts, big boards, stuff like that to make this list. So um, Drew Allar's consensus ADP right now is 55th overall. You see his stats there last year. Good stats, 2,600 yards passing, 25 touchdowns, the only two interceptions. So very, very good with the ball. Um, once we start to get to these five, six, seven, eight guys, you see the rankings. It depends on the website you look at and who you're looking at, and their rankings are kind of all over the all over the place. PFF, for example, has Drew Allar, I think, as their QB five. Um, other places, I've seen him as low as like the QB nine. So it's kind of all over the place. He has the size. He's kind of that prototypical six five, two forty three um, size quarterback. Um, he has a, an, an incredible arm, right? Um, you know, top tier arm strength. Um, can kind of make all the throws that he needs to make. Um, not super mobile. I mean, he did run a little bit, uh, 206 yards rushing, four touchdowns, which, again, considering they they count sacks as negative rushing yards for quarterbacks in college, uh, that's actually not that bad. Uh, his deep ball, you know, he could just be a little bit more consistent. His accuracy is inconsistent. And, and honestly, that is probably the most important three thing for a quarterback. It's not the arm strength, it's the accuracy. Most quarterbacks, a lot of quarterbacks have big arms, but um, very few of them can be accurate. And it's just much more, um, you know, you're much more likely to translate to the NFL level uh, if you're accurate. So Drew Allar, a player to keep an eye on in the 2024 college season, which will be starting in just a couple months, which I'm excited about. You see his ADP there. He is considered right now a second round pick. So that could easily go up. That could easily go down, right? These guys could enter into the first round conversation or they could just fall off a cliff, right? Happens every year. Happens every year. Um, the next guy up is Connor um, Wigman. Wigman. I think it's Wigman um, out of Texas A&M. Um, ADP at 78, so he's kind of a, a fringe second rounder, early third round pick, uh, according to consensus mock drafts as the QB7. Went to Texas A&M, as I mentioned. 
Um, you see his numbers there, um, Wagman, um, only 200 and uh, sorry, 979 yards passing, eight touchdowns, two interceptions, 63 yards rushing, and two um, touchdowns. Um, so basically, I've seen him as high as QB4. He only played in four games last year. Uh, so those stats are for four games. Yeah. So he's only, he only played in, in, in four games. So um, he started the first four games and then he got a foot injury that ended his season. But you can see from the numbers, he was basically averaging 250 yards, two touchdowns, and completing around 70% of his passes. So he was doing really, really well. And then he got the foot injury that took him out for the entire season. Um, so we'll see his ability to, to bounce back from that injury. He has a new coaching staff as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all that kind of plays out. Uh, but again, I've seen him as high as, a, as QB4 on some sites. So people are saying this is a guy who we're kind of hedging our bets a little bit. That's why maybe he's this low. This is a guy that could easily enter first round potential um, if he has a good season. You know, again, good good ball placement. Um, he can attack the defenses kind of all over the field horizontally, um, vertically. Uh, he's a pretty accurate quarterback. He is a little bit inconsistent at times. Uh, again, tough to know, though, because we only saw four games of him. We saw we, he hardly played his freshman year. He got hurt after four games. So it's really, really hard to, to know exactly what we have in him. But um, again, I, a lot of people are saying that he could easily enter the first round pick conversation so keep an eye out for him this year riley leonard is up next uh former um duke quarterback that transferred to notre dame again kind of has that that typical size 6'4, 215 so a little bit lower he's kind of considered like a dual threat running back or sorry dual threat quarterback you see his numbers there 1100 yards passing three touchdowns and three interceptions so kind of disgusting numbers there especially considering that that was in seven games so um not that great you know only three touchdowns in seven games is is not that intriguing um you know he's pretty efficient in his uh previous year uh in 2022 at duke he threw you know 20 touchdowns to six interceptions uh had a really good you know quarterback rating if you believe in that pretty good um percentage you see his rushing numbers there 352 yards rushing and four touchdowns in seven games is really really good again considering sacks go against their negative yards towards your rushing total so uh, in college um but yeah you, you you see he's kind of considered a a dual threat um quarterback and uh we'll see he's going to notre dame so he's gonna go he's gonna get a lot more spotlight i think than playing at duke so we'll see how that kind of um you know, how that transitions and how that boosts or hurts his uh, draft stock. You see that he's kind of considered like a fringe third round pick at this time. Um, you know, people are comparing him a little bit to like a Will Levis or Desmond Ritter type of player. Um, but we'll see. You know, this is where his IQ, according to what I hear, again, how do you measure IQ from watching film? You can't really do that. Maybe you can, but uh, I can't do that personally. Um, apparently, he has the football IQ to kind of just exploit defenses, break them down, you know, pre-snap type of stuff. Um, you know, uh, if you want to see him better in the pocket, which is what a lot of critics have against him. Um, just a little bit inconsistent, a little bit better under center as well. But um, he has the toolbox, like he has the skills to be an all-around quarterback. So... Again, we're excited to see him at Notre Dame. And then the last guy, last quarterback we're talking about is Jackson Dart from Ole Miss. He's um, kind of a fringe um, third-round pick as well, as you can see there. Um, Jackson Dart, uh, his ADP is at 98. So with, with comp picks, I believe that still makes him a – yeah, that makes him still a third-round pick with comp picks. QB9, he's been at um, – you know, this is going to be his fourth year in college – Started at USC, moved to Ole Miss. Um, Ole Miss is kind of a um, a factory for in terms of offense. Like they, they're just they kind of put up a little bit of video game numbers a little bit. Um, you can see his numbers from last year: thirty three hundred, almost thirty four hundred yards passing, twenty three touchdowns to five interceptions. Also, almost four hundred yards rushing and eight touchdowns. So he's kind of a 
mobile pocket quarterback, right? He's not a dual threat quarterback. He stands at 6'2", 220, so he's a little bit stockier. I don't think he's necessarily a dual threat quarterback, but he's a mobile pocket guy. Um, so again, I've seen people have him as high as like QB 6'7". Where um, consensus mock draft database has him as the um, as the QB nine on this list. So he's kind of the last of um, a tier, and then it really falls off to fourth, fifth round pick guys. Um, Jackson Dart is kind of um, the last of it. As of right now, the last of the guys that could potentially go in the third round, of course, is that going to change? When I say mobile pocket guy, I think of like Sam Howell. Uh, Sam Howell to me is like a mobile pocket guy. He can move, but he's not going to put up 700 yards rushing or whatever. But anyways, you, you see his numbers there. He's putting up really good numbers at Ole Miss the last two years. Um, again, Ole Miss is going to put up numbers, so he's going to have nice, gaudy numbers. Um, strong, strong arm, you know, um, can can be an explosive runner at times. Don't think he's going to be a dual threat guy, but he can definitely move, which is good. Um, he definitely, you know, his arm talent, he lacks elite arm talent, which is why he's going to potentially go in the second or third or fourth round, right? He lacks that elite, elite arm talent. So, um, if he can, you know, obviously you can improve on that. So that's going to, it's going to limit you a little bit, but if you can be super accurate, which he is relatively accurate, I would say. Um, then that can make up for the lack of arm talent a little bit. So there you have it, guys. That's nine quarterbacks over the two videos we've gone over. Nine of them that are potential third round or better picks. As of right now, we have three going in the first round. This is, again, according to Consensus Mock Draft Database. Three going in the first round. Um, three more going in the second round. And three more going in the third round. So I expect about four first round quarterbacks. Um, three or four first round quarterbacks next year. But we'll see. We will see. Moving on to the running backs, which is the the creme de la creme of this draft class. If you thought like if you thought last year's wide receiver, you know, the 2024 NFL drafts was stacked with wide receiver, think of 2025 as the same thing, but with running backs. Like it's insane the running back talent. In our dynasty rookie drafts, and this is just a good thing to know in the back of your head, I think there potentially could be six or seven running backs taken in the first uh, in the first round of a dynasty rookie draft. Potentially, you got to see how many quarterbacks and wide receivers go in the first round. But I could potentially see like anywhere from five to seven running backs going in the first round of a 12 team um, dynasty rookie draft. So that just shows you the talent. Um, keep that in your mind. If you need a running back, keep that in your mind. If you have kind of a fringe player that you're not really sure where they stand in 2025 with their team. They could get replaced because there's just so much talent. The five guys we went over in the last video, which you should check out if you haven't, link is in the description. Uh, Quinn Sean Judkins, Ollie Gordon the second, Omario Hampton, Travion Henderson, and Ashton John T. Jane T. John T. I need to check that name. All those guys that I just listed are either first or early second round picks. Either first or early second round. There's like two first round picks and then three more that are going to go in the top 50. That's what that's what the mock draft database. Trevor Etienne is the first up on our list here out of Georgia. You can see there he's kind of a fringe second round pick himself. Um, a fringe second round pick himself. Uh, RB6. You see his numbers there. You see him in the um, – uh, he played at Florida, but he transferred to Georgia. 753 yards there, eight touchdowns. Uh, 21 catches for another 170 yards. So he, he can, he can, to me, he can do both. Um, I see him floating around this RB six, seven range. To me, he can be a workhorse. He can, he's five, nine, two seventeen, So he's stocky. He's kind of projected to run in the mid four fours. So he kind of has all the tools in my opinion, to be a workhorse guy. He's a downhill runner. Um, you know, he can win between the tackles. He can, um, you know, he's, he's a good pass catcher. He's not amazing, but he's a good pass catcher, strong build, strong hands. Um, you know, does he have elite breakaway speed? No, but that's okay. Um, that That's okay. Other than that, though, he, he kind of has all the other tools. Besides that elite home run, maybe hitting. Now, if he can get past the defense within the first 10 yards, he could bust off a 60-yard run. I just mean, like, you know, that home run potential type of play. I don't know if he has that. That's really to me, 
like the only negative I kind of see of him. I hope Georgia kind of uses him a little bit more. You know, Florida kind of has a, um, a reputation for not using some of their skill position players enough. And I think ETN was kind of one of those guys. So um, I'm excited to um, to see how he does at Georgia and if they kind of use him as a workhorse. By the way, he is the younger brother of Travis ETN, in case you were wondering. Um so yeah, fringe second round pick already. So we're talking about um, six guys that can easily be second round picks, you know, four that are either first or early second round picks. And then, uh, sorry, five that are early, that are either first or early second round picks. And then Trevor Etienne is kind of considered a fringe second rounder as well. Nick Singleton is up next uh, for Penn State ADP at 82nd overall uh, as the RB second, uh, seven. So he's considered a third round pick, which for running backs is still really, really good draft capital. Um, you see his numbers there. Um, Nick Singleton, that is, um, or Nicholas Singleton, as he is in a lot of data databases, uh, 752 yards, rushing eight touchdowns, 26 catches, 308 yards and two touchdowns. And I'm just double checking. I believe now he played every game, had 171 carries. So, he wasn't a workhorse, workhorse running back. I believe um, there was, yeah, Katron Allen um, had one more carry than him. So he's kind of part of a, a split backfield a little bit. But to me, um, Nichols Singleton is can be kind of a dual a dual role running back. He's six foot, 228. Um, he, he's going to run probably in the four threes. There's a good chance he runs in the four threes. Like he is fast, especially considering he's almost 230 pounds. That's insane. 230 pounds and he runs a low 4-4 four four or a high 4-3 is absolutely insane. Um, he, I think um, Bruce Feldman does that 2023 freak list. And I believe um, Singleton was like in the top 30 or something. Yeah, I'm basically saying what I just said. 228 pounds of running a 4-3-9. Um, and all his other combine drill stuff was like insane. And he like bench pressed a ridiculous amount. <laughs> the dude is just an absolute freak, right? Um, now, how he wins a lot is um, is relying on that athleticism. And that always concerns me just a little bit because in college, you can get away with it. In the NFL, everyone's athletic. Everyone's the most, was the most athletic. Whew, I can't speak. Everyone was the most, most athletic player on their high school team or one of the most in, in their college team. So, you know, you, you want to see him be a little bit of course, more consistent of just getting the easy yards, you know, running between the tackles. And sometimes when you need three yards for a first down, just get the three yards. That's what a team wants. Want to see that a little bit more, but to me, this guy can be an all around uh, running back in the, in the passing game. I know his numbers aren't gaudy, but 26 catches for 308 yards is, is insane. Like that's an insane number there. That's 11.8 yards per reception, which is insane for a running back, which just shows his talent. Get the ball in his hands. This guy is awesome. So um, another player that could potentially um, that could potentially move into the second round. And I wouldn't be surprised. There's just so much talent at the running back position. Donovan Edwards is another one of Michigan. They're, now, you know, well, we'll get into it. ADP 87, so he's considered a third-round pick as well. RB8, you see his numbers there, 497 yards. Um, four, 497 yards rushing, five touchdowns, 30 catches for 250 yards. There's a lot of people. Obviously, Blake Corum was on this team, uh, and Blake Corum was, like, just dominated touches. Um, we'll see if they give hand it over to Donovan, Donovan Edwards. I hope they do. Donovan Edwards in 2022 was awesome. He had um, 991 yards on 140 carries, uh, 18 catches as well for 200 yards. So he averaged 7.1 yards per carry in 2022 and 11.1 yards per uh, reception. He averaged 13.3 yards per reception his freshman year, 8.3 this last year. There's a lot of people going into last year that thought Donovan Edwards was the better running back over Blake Corum. We saw Blake Corum go in the third round. Um, to me, Donovan Edwards has all the tools to be a, an all-around complete back. I think he's very special in the um, as a pass catcher. I really, really do think he's special as a pass catcher. Awesome burst. You know, he's not the fastest guy. He, I think he's going to run like a 4-5, maybe a, a low 4-5. Um, 
but he can. His 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 burst is insane. I, I'm going to be very curious as to what his 10 yard split is. Again, 10 yard split. How fast are you within the first 10 yards? Because I think it's going to be very good because his burst is insane when you watch him play. He has good size. Um, he's six foot two two ten, six foot one two ten. So he's a big guy. Could be even maybe put on more weight. He has very good vision. He's good at pass protecting, which is so so important in the NFL. So important, not for fantasy in terms of numbers, but for good for fantasy to get you on the field. Again, doesn't have the top end speed. Is a little bit inconsistent, and we did see a regression last year, um, which is always a little concerning. But, man, I'm excited. I hope they make him the workhorse guy because if he is, um, he could shoot up draft boards, to be honest. I, I just think he's such a talented pass catcher. I really like Donovan Edwards a lot. Um, I like him a lot. So um, moving right along, we have Devin Neal, who is also a third-round pick. If you're keeping tabs, that's nine potential third round. That's five potential first or early second-round picks. I believe t- uh, one more. Uh, second round pick, and then three more now third round picks. So nine play, nine running backs going in the third round potentially. Devin Neal out of Kansas, ADP 89th, uh, RB9, 2023 numbers there, 1,280 yards uh, rushing, 16 touchdowns, 25 catches, 217 yards. This guy was a huge part of Kansas' offense. Um, Devin Neal, that is. Um, so... Sorry, I'm just um, pulling up my notes on him a little bit. Um, he is a uh, 5'11", 210, so uh, another good size. That's kind of the theme with these this running back draft class is like we don't have a lot of like HNs or Keaton Mitchells or, um, you know, those small guys that we're concerned about, which maybe we shouldn't be, but we have a lot of like prototypical running back builds. I think this guy is another guy that can be a workhorse running back. I know I'm like saying that for all these guys, that's how talented this running back class is. This is going to be, I hope, the running back running back class that kind of replenishes the pool. Remember, I think it was in 2017, we had an insane running back draft class um, that just like, and those guys are still playing football. Um, I hope this is like that, where you just look back and like, holy crap, there was like 10 fantasy relevant running backs that came from this draft class. Uh, Devin Neal, um, again, you see his numbers there, super productive at, um, uh, at Kansas was kind of their um uh the kind of their whole team there i was just looking at his um his yards per per carry was at 6.3 um which is awesome it was 6.1 the year before so super super productive um to me he has it all he's a natural pass catcher he can grab those swing passes um he's good in the screen game he has quick feet um he he's a, a he can run in between the tackles, get him in the open field, and the dude is awesome. Like, super, super awesome in the open field. Um, he's not a home run threat. He's not a blazer. Again, I think he's going to run like a 4-5. Um, so, you know, that that's something. But I'm not too worried about that. Um, running backs, if you run a 4-5, even a mid 4-5 or lower, I'm okay with you still if you're just a good running back. Um, so, overall, I'm excited to see Devin Neal. I'm a little surprised... I was just double checking. I think he could have come out last year. I'm a little surprised he didn't. I'd be very curious where he would have gone in this year's draft class if he did come in, considering there's a little bit of a weaker draft class. Um, Raheem Sanders is the last guy here. Um, you see him in the Arkansas jersey. He actually transferred to South Carolina. Rocket Raheem Rocket Sanders was considered going into last year as maybe the best running back in college football. Up there. He was up there as potentially the best running back in college football. And man, is the drop-off painful to see. Because I like um, Rocket Sanders a lot. I liked him going into it. Um, 6'2", 242. The dude is a beast. Like, the dude is an absolute beast. Think Braylon Allen, Derrick Henry type of one. And he's going to run like a mid-4-4-4. Four, four, four. Like a mid-4-4, four, four, excuse me. Um, man, like, again, just... Just um, everything about him was like leading into, um, wow, this guy's going to have a monster, monster 2023 season. And he just did it. As you can see, I actually wrote down his 2022 stats because he played in six games last year. Um, He played in six games. I think he tore his labrum. Um, 
uh, what was it? I think he tore his labrum. Yeah, it was. It, uh, I want to say he tore his labrum in in um, the end of the season or something like that. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. I know he had like surgery on on a on his labrum. Um, yeah, and and maybe like a torn meniscus as well. He got injured, right? He only played in six games last year. Um, only played in six games, but he was not good. He had uh, 209 yards and two touchdowns in those six games. Like, that's bad. That's not good numbers. Um, look at his 2022 numbers, though. This is why everyone was excited. You're looking at a guy that had 1,700 total yards, 12 touchdowns, 28 catches. Like, the dude was awesome. Um, he was awesome heading into the season. And then, yeah, it's just, man, I hope he can return for him. But it's always... It's worrisome to just see... Well, one, it's worrisome with the injuries because especially with running backs, um, running backs in in college, um, you know, when they regress, when they get injured, things like that, it's just... It's worrisome. It really is. Um, and again, like, just looking at his first six games, he was just bad. He averaged 3.4 yards a carry. He had 209 yards his first six games. 103 of them came in one game, which means he had... 106 yards in five games last year. That is God awful. God awful. So I hope you can return to form with South Carolina. We'll see. But if he doesn't, he's going to fall off. He absolutely fall off. So I'm fortunate to see, but he's still considered as of right now, ADP 96, a third round pick that, that gives us, um, that gives us, and there's another player, uh, Damian Martinez at Oregon State that I believe with comp picks would be considered a first, a third round pick. But anyways, th that's 10 guys that are potentially going in the third round. Just for reference, last year we had four. We had four running backs go in the top three rounds and no first round picks, right? Um, 2023, for reference, we had, uh, give, give me a second here to pull it up. Uh, 2023, we had um, one, two, three, four, five go in the first um, uh, the first three rounds. 2022, this is the last one I will do it for. Um, 2022, we had um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six guys go in the first three rounds. So there could potentially be 10. Just shows you how awesome this draft class is. I'm going to try to get through these receivers a little bit faster. Trey Harris. At Ole Miss, ADP 40, wide receiver 5. He actually moved over Isaiah Bond, who we talked in, talked about in the last video. By the way, in the last video, um, the players we talked about were Tech McMillan, Luther Burden, who are both mocked as top 10 picks. Emeka Abuka is considered a first-round pick. Evan Stewart is also considered a first-round pick. Um, and then we have Isaiah Bond and Trey Harris, who are considered top 45 picks, early second round picks. Trey Harris there, you see his numbers. Um, it's supposed to be saying 2023. Um, 54 catches, 985 yards, eight touchdowns. Something to keep in mind when you see these numbers and maybe they don't look that amazing is um, I haven't done what percentage. If they were playing on, you know, what if... What if Ole Miss, and I know they didn't, but I'm just as an example. What if Ole Miss only threw for 2,500 yards? Well, that 985 yards looks way more impressive than if Ole Miss threw for 4,000 yards, right? So keep that in mind when you see these raw numbers. I haven't worked out the percentages yet, which I will be doing. Um, but yeah, Trey, Trey, um, excuse me, Trey Harris considered a, um, a second round pick, as you can see by the ADP of 40, considered a top 40 pick now. Um, so 6'2", uh, 205 is going to run in the low 4'4s. Four so has kind of all that straight line speed, uh, outside receiver, physical frame to kind of win. You know, hopefully he can get a little bit better at uh, zone coverage. Nick Anderson from Oklahoma, also considered a second round pick. Um, wide receiver seven in, as of right now in this upcoming draft class. 38 catches for 798 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's if you're doing the math, that's over 25% of his catches were touchdowns, which is uh, probably not going to happen. Um, again, you know, you'd like to see a little bit more than 38 catches, but um, I think his yards per reception was like uh, 21 or something crazy like that. Um, I see him all over the place. I see him as a, a, a top seven guy. I've seen him as like not even in the top 12. So 6'4", 209. Um, he's going to be an outside X receiver. Um, 
do need a little bit. I mean, for fantasy purposes, we want to see a little bit more consistency of like being a little bit more of a target hog. We'll see. We'll see how he, um, how he progresses. But um, man, last year, 21 yards per reception, didn't do anything his fresh, his first year at Oklahoma. So um, we'll be interested to see how he progresses. Uh, Barry and Brown out of Kentucky. Uh, Barry and Brown, ADP 61st. So he's still considered a second round pick. Barry and Brown is again, seen him all over the place. I've seen him in low as like the top 20 receiver. Uh, he's six foot one, 166. He's one of these small, small guys, but he doesn't play like he's six foot one, 166. He can obviously put on more pounds with that six foot one frame. The dude is fast. If anyone's going to break, um, Xavier Worthy's 40 yard dash record. Um, it's going to be this guy, Barry Brown. I, it, people are projecting him to run a 4 3 2. So the dude is deadly, deadly, deadly when he's in space. So someone's going to take a chance on him. Um, now, is that going to translate? We've seen a lot of players that are fast that don't translate. We've seen players that are fast that do translate. He has really good hands. Um, again, his speed and balance is good. He doesn't play like he's only 166 pounds. Um, so again, we'll see, you see his numbers there, 539 yards, four touchdowns, he even got 12 carries, which shows his versatility, get the ball in this guy's hands. And he is awesome. Tory Holt, Tory Horton, um, Tory Horton is up next. The Colorado state guy, this guy, huh, go watch his 2023 game film against Colorado. And man, this guy was just dominating, dominating. I think he had 16 catches in that game. Um, you see his numbers there. It's kind of fun to, to talk about a, a wide receiver coming out of Colorado State because we don't really um, talk about these guys. Tory Hor Hor Tory Horton, <laughs> that is. Um, he's also considered a fringe second round pick. Massive numbers for um, for Colorado State last year, over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. He's six foot two, 190. He's going to be an outside receiver. He's going to run a mid four four. Um, just really good skills uh, um, in terms of catching the ball. He has generate separation, get down the field. Um, he's really good in the middle of the field as well, like the mid routes. Um, and so maybe just to see a little bit better agility and things like that out of him, but he, he's awesome. I can see him moving up even more. And people are a little hesitant about putting a Colorado state receiver, maybe this high, but this guy's producing back-to-back -back years of over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. Um, so he's going into his fifth year. So he is going to be a little bit older, I believe. I'm not sure how old he is right now, but um, yeah, not sure how old he is. Um, but we will find that out. And the last guy we're talking about is Tez Johnson um, out of Oregon. Actually, our second Oregon receiver. Um, he's considered a third round pick wide receiver, 10, 86 catch well, Oregon puts up video game numbers. So you gotta be a little bit wary of that. When you see those numbers and compare them to others, like Oregon just puts up absolute video game numbers, uh, 86 catches, 1182 yards, 10 touchdowns. That was with, um, you know, Troy Franklin going there as well. Uh, a lot of people like Tez, um, Tez Johnson, um, he played at Troy his first three years. And then last year at Oregon, where he exploded. So he's going into his fifth year here. He's 5'10", 160. So he's a smaller guy. He's a slot guy probably, but he's blazing fast. He's another guy that could run a low 4'3". Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, he's, um, you know, he's, he's probably is going to be a slot guy, which limits fantasy upside there. All right. Getting into the tight ends real quick. Don't want to spend too much time on these guys because um, we only talked about three in the last video because those were the only three that were um, – it's very – it's heavy at the top. We have a first-round tight end in Colston Loveland out of Michigan, probably going to be a first-rounder. Luke Lackey out of Iowa is the next Iowa tight end. He's going to be probably a second-round pick. Mitchell Evans out of um, Notre Dame is also probably going to be a second-round pick. And then that's about it. Tyler Warren I think could sneak into the third round. Uh, he's the first guy we're talking about here out of Penn State. Um uh, ADP at the 109, so he is kind of on the on on the uh, bubble there as a potential um, third round pick. Pretty good numbers in terms of just raw numbers. 39 catches, 422 yards, and seven touchdowns are really good. That's really good for a uh, Penn State tight end. Um, so 
uh, Tyler Warren, that is. Uh, he's 6'6", 256, so a little bit more of a traditional tight end. So I think he's going to be that in-line hybrid. You know, he's he's going to be just as valuable as a blocker as he is a uh, pass catcher, which is good for football and your football team. But for fantasy, you know, we want to see the guys get 1,000 yards. I don't think he's going to be that type of player. But, you know, he's going to be very valuable to a team. And for that reason, he could have a nice role for a team, depending on where he goes. Oscar Delp out of Georgia. He's kind of the heir apparent to uh, Mr. Brock Bowers. Um, he uh, is a little bit closer to, he's kind of a mi- right in between the traditional and the new age tight end. 6'5", 245, so pretty good size there. Again, he probably plays kind of in that in-line role uh, as a blocker slash pass catcher. Um, obviously, he didn't have a huge stat- uh, statistical numbers playing behind Brock Bowers, but he gets his chances chance now. Could be a third round pick, maybe a fourth round pick. Um, we'll see. But he's very good with the ball in his hands. He's fun to see with the ball in his hands. So I'm just I am interested to see how well he'll do um, as as he expands his role because he can easily move up if he what he's shown with the limited um, um, opportunity he's had. If that translates to if he keeps showing that over the course of a season and being the main tight end for the team, then he's going to move up draft boards hundred percent. And then Tyler Warren, uh, sorry, not Tyler Warren. I put Tyler Warren in here twice. Um, the last guy I want to talk about, I actually don't have, um, I don't know why I didn't put his, um, his graphic here. I, I made a mistake there, but Bryson Nesbitt, I believe I'm saying that right out of um, North Carolina, uh, Bryson Nesbitt. He, in terms of his statistical numbers, they're actually really good. 41 catches, 585 yards, five touchdowns, back-to-back 500-yard seasons, back-to-back um, thir- over 35 catches in a season. Um, he is a little bit more like the new age tight end, 6'5", 235. He's like a big wide receiver, essentially. So he's going to be like that slot receiving tight end, which for fantasy is is exciting, but you know, a team wants to – needs needs to value that position. So he's kind of like a wide receiver tight end hybrid a little bit. So he's, he's a good route runner, good hands and things like that. He's going to have problem in the, in the run game. (coughs) Sorry. In the blocking game is what I mean, um, which could limit where teams want to take him. So there we have it guys a little bit longer than the last one, but those are the players um, potentially going again, stacked running back class, still a good wide receiver class. I expect four at least four wide receivers to go in the first round. I'm predicting four quarterbacks to go in the first round. I'm going to predict one running back to go in the first round, but that's just because people don't value running backs and one tight end. So if you talk about four, four, one, and one, that's going to be 10 first round picks at the fantasy relevant positions. And then a lot of, um, especially at the running back position, a lot of good value in the early second round. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like you did the last one, give us a like and subscribe, join our discord. If you'd like, Um, link is in the description as well. Catch you guys all in the next.